but it gives me a chance to to write one more time about those people and you know they don't get an awful lot of attention mm -hmm. so it's a chance to give it to them and you're working on a novel yeah we're doing a novel for Knopf right now yeah what can, what can you say about it well I'm supposed to be really far along with it uh, so I guess now that everyone knows I'm not <laughs> But it's, uh, it, it, it's, it'll be uh, uh, built around the people of the foothills of the Appalachians. It will be working folks. It will be uh, two-fisted, uh, uh, hard-living mm -hmm. people that I've written about all my life. It'll just all be made up. And there'll be some midgets in it. For, for good measure. Well, uh, I know the techn I know the, 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 the proper term is little people, mm -hmm. but, but uh, back when I was a little kid, that you know, right. was not. That's right. And I was a little boy, true story, mm -hmm. laying in my bed on the Roy Webb Road. Yeah. And um, about, about dawn, and I wake up to elephants trumpeting. And I wake up to lions roaring. And I think I'm dreaming. And uh, not that it necessarily anybody needs to know this, but when I was four or five years old, I didn't like clothes very much. Just didn't like clothes. And sure wasn't going to sleep in any. So no matter what my mama put me in, they were gone by the morning. So I jumped out of bed, buck naked, ran outside, which you did in the country. You just, you know, nobody said, don't go outside. Um, and I ran out and in the gloom, going down Royal Webb Road, were elephants. And they really did have their trunks wrapped around the tail of the elephant in front. And rolling behind them was the tail end of a circus caravan. And it had been more romantic if they'd been in wagons, but they were in trucks. But they had thrown the tarps up, and you could see the big cats. And they were pacing back and forth and roaring, and monkeys. And what they were doing was setting up. There was a fallow field across the road near an area called Germania Springs. And the field wasn't in use, and it seemed like a good place for the circus to set up. And... Um, but the, the lions and the tigers and, and the elephants were not what was fascinating. Walking behind them was a little group of little people. Only we didn't call them little people then. We called them midgets. And they were not in costume. They were not, you know, doing anything except walking. And they had on little khaki pants and shirts and hats, fedoras, I think because it would have been back in the yeah. early 60s. Yeah. And they were smoking cigarettes and telling stories and talking, yakking. Oh. And I looked at them, and they looked at me, and it's hard to tell who's more <laughs> surprised. But it was, um, it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. So, yeah, uh, there'll be some midgets in there somewhere. You, um, I want to talk, uh, talk about the South. Sure. You lived up north for a time in, in yeah. Boston. You lived in New York City. And I'm wondering, when you lived there, what southern ways did you miss? Or what? Oh, I, I, oh, I missed it in other places than that. I missed it in L.A. and missed it in Miami. And, um, well, the, the main thing you miss uh, is food. You know, uh, uh, you miss the accents. Because you really do kind of become invisible in a way uh, when you don't hear. It's kind of like when I was in Miami and I didn't speak very much Spanish, you feel a little invisible. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but mostly, I miss the food. Mm -hmm. I miss the fact that you can have a whole supermarket and not one box of grits. Um, and what I would do to keep from starving to death is I would uh, twice a week, uh, I lived in, uh, at first in Midtown Manhattan, 
and I would uh, when I was in New York, and I'd just get in the cab and, or get on the train and go up to Harlem, yeah. and I'd eat uh, in Harlem, mm -hmm. and I would eat uh, at a place called Sylvia's, oh, yeah. and eat fried chicken, green beans, macaroni and cheese. Uh, Tuesday, I think, was stewed turkey wings and dressing. Um, Cornbread dressing. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. Well, there ain't no other kind. Right. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, big old red velvet cake, you know, under glass. Um, uh, you know, and they had some barbecue in Manhattan, but it, but it wasn't really. I mean, it, it really wasn't. Barbecue is such a, it's such a specific thing to yeah. the location. There right. Is, there's no one definitive. No, oh, no, no. Uh, and the, the best barbecue I had in Manhattan was uh, a place that admitted that they stole it. They, they, they just, his place in Midtown, they just said, yeah, you know what, we stole it. And they just tried to emulate what they stole from all these places, and they did a good job with it. But, you know, barbecue is kind of like love. You know, the, even the worst you had still pretty good. So, you know, That's so. Um, but I missed the food. I, I missed, um, I missed, um, I don't want to say, it, it, I don't want to say uh, courtesy because that's the wrong word. Because folks up there were very nice to me. But, you know, you, you, you miss bumping into somebody and saying, oh, sorry. You know, instead of, get out of my way, I'm walking here. You know, so mm -hmm. miss that a little bit. You know, if you look at a lot of lists, the South very often shows up at the bottom in terms of education and health care and infrastructure and things like that. I'm wondering what do you think about how do we how do we fix poverty and is the answer different for the North than it is for the South? I think I, I don't know if it's different I just know that um, in the Deep South we are gonna have to address some some issues uh, that we have just let fester for too long. Um, in Alabama, uh, our constitution is out of date. Ha you know, has to be uh, redone, reworked, to to make it a fairer place for poor folks. You should not pay taxes on food in Alabama and Mississippi. It just should not be the case. Um, so we need to address these things. We have to fix them. There is a, 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 a kind of a sadly comfortable return to the days of the landed gentry in the Deep South. Um, uh, the, the haves, of course, this is our country over the past eight years. Uh, the, the haves got more and more and the have-nots lost more and more. Well, that was particularly true in the Deep South. And it just has to change. Uh, education, uh, we, we, I don't know how you make people believe that public schools are the key to the castle, that good, great public schools only help our society as a whole. In the Deep South, one of the problems we have is a, um, a, a, a turn more and more and more to academies where wealthy kids, you know, uh, wealthier kids go to school and leaving public schools to poor kids, uh, which quite frankly leads to less attention to the poor schools and the public schools. I don't see how society can be great if it has poor public schools. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Obviously, it's easy to talk about mm -hmm. it and it's hard to fix. You, you wrote in um, Ava's Man about how some, sub, some Southern school children try to hide their accent. Mm -hmm. Were you ever embarrassed by your accents when you were young? No, no. I, I don't. And I never really, I mean, I, the only accents we noticed were the people that didn't talk like <laughs> us, and uh, you know that we were—we didn't talk funny. 
I still think that there's a richness and a and a and a and a, a just a, a a smooth kind of um, easy flavor in the way that Southerners talk, and um, I'm biased. But um, no, I never did understand why. I, I, I was at a dinner party with a, with, with some people. My wife made me go uh, in our neighborhood, and uh, and uh, there was some guy who who was a southerner, and he and he said uh, he you know he he'd worked real hard to get rid of his southern accent, 